Good morning. Today, um, it, it's it's going to be a shorter lesson, but probably one of the more important ones. We're going to talk about electrical safety. This is something that I'm not necessarily trained in the medical part so much that we're going to discuss, but we're going to talk about what you need to do because we're going to start. Well, let me back up. We're going to move into electrical. Uh, we're going to go through and talk about the different types of wiring, uh, what is currently code that I know of. Uh, just basic rundown, enough to be dangerous with electrical. But with that being said, this stuff, I mean, we talked about insulation the other day. I guess if, yeah, you eat it, it could hurt you, or long-term exposure of not wearing a respirator or a mask could probably hurt you, but it can't hurt you. Most of the stuff that we've talked about so far, it really, unless you're like, you're eating it or hurting yourself with it physically, it can't hurt you. Electrical, it can be deadly if you don't know what you're doing and you don't take precautions. Uh, so we're going to go through that today. I wrote down here, and this is the first time I had to write down. Normally I have a slideshow behind me that I could talk about, but I'll write these down. I wrote these down. When we're talking about electrical, um, we're talking about energy that's fed from a source, like power stations, solar panels, whatever it may be, to your home to provide energy for everything, all those creature comforts you love. Um, the problem is, is that this stuff, it can kill you. Uh, we, we really need to be careful when working with it, and we're going to talk about some of the very basics here. Um, I noticed in my videos I've been saying um a lot. I'm sorry, but I guess we'll have to have like an um counter up in the corner for every time I say um. Uh, it's one of those things that I even notice when I'm going back through and watching the videos. So, let's talk about actually electrical shock and what it is. Electrical shock, your, your body runs on electrical impulses. Very, very, very minute electrical impulses. Your brain is sending electrical pulses to your body that makes your muscles contract and so forth. That power is coming from the food that we eat. Uh, so we're our own little electrical systems. These are also electrical systems. The problem is, if I interact, they short both out, both me and this. And if it shorts out me, I can possibly die or get severely injured. On this end, who knows, start fires or whatever. Again, I'm more worried about me in this instance, but... Yeah, two electrical systems clashing, it doesn't work out. With that being said, one milliamp, that is one one thousandth of an amp, so a very, very, very minute amount of amperage, you can feel. If I had a source where this is one milliamp and I touch it, you could probably, you could feel it. The human can actually feel it. Is it enough to hurt you? No, but you can feel it. Ten milliamps. Ten milliamps is actually enough to contract muscle. That's about what your body is running as, 10-ish milliamps, very minute amounts, but enough that you can feel it. 100 milliamps is enough to kill you if it lasts more than a few seconds of direct, perfect conditions. An outlet, like, well, this is actually going to be a switch, but let's just say this is an outlet, is typically 15 amps. That is 150,000 milliamps. It's enough to kill you. Well, Mr. McMullen, my dad's been shocked here. I got shocked once by an outlet. Yeah, it, it, you probably maybe have. Hopefully not. It, it's not fun. But it's, it's a quick thing. It's very instant. If you just sat there and stuck your finger and held it for more than a few seconds, you're probably going to be found, you know, and we'll read about you in the paper. So most times people get shocked and, you know, the first instinct is you pull away. Less than a second. Um, you get into higher voltages and you can't pull away. Your body contracts. Remember, we said it was only 10 milliamps is all it takes for your body muscles to contract. And sometimes you can't pull away. The other scary thing about electrical um, injuries is typically, unless it's like crazy high voltages, it can't be seen. Um, electrical in your body, your body's made of water and all your systems are inside of you. So when you actually are getting electrocuted, internally, your body's being damaged. It's basically like a microwave. It is cooking you from the inside outward. So a lot of times, you know, people that find people that have been electrocuted or severely injured, even lightning strikes, will come up and, you know, there was just a burn mark on the side of them. It didn't look that bad. Well, that's because their internal organs were literally microwave for the most part. So you got to be really careful. Um, and remember, too, in order to be actually electrocuted, you have, a, have to have a, a, a ground. You're, the, this is trying to find literally earth. Uh, and I know people are like, well, I wear tennis shoes. They have rubber. It's not enough. It's not enough at all. 
I mean, now if I was on a f fiberglass ladder that was totally insulated, then yeah, there, it really lessens the ch chance of electrical shock. But again, we're going to talk about the best way to prevent electrical shock. It's, it's, it's so easy, anyone can do it. Um, and then the other thing too, um, I just looked at my notes making sure I have everything. You have to forgive me again. I normally have a, you know, the screen up here, but hey, we're up here in a construction site. It's, it's good. Um, remember that electrical, and I'm going to grab some stuff as we're talking. Remember that electricity is always trying to find the path of least resistance. This electrical wants to find bare earth. And I know you're like, well, you're upstairs, Mr. Kamalan. Yeah, but I'm a good ground because I'm touching, you know, wood is not a good insulator, but trust me, I'm a good ground. It, it, it's, don't, don't mess with it. Even if you're upstairs, on a ladder, whatever, just, no. Here is the best way to prevent electroshock don't have electricity and I know you're like well mr. come on that's like saying if you if you don't want to get fat don't eat food yeah that's true if you uh, don't want to drown don't go in water true same with electrical if you don't want to get shocked or if you want to make it where you're safe to work with this and you know touch this put your hands in here do everything else don't have electricity flowing through the wire problem solved okay that seems simple you think it is but amazingly Lots of people every year are hurt by electrical. Everything from your, your lineman all the way down to your homeowner because electricity was turned on and they didn't realize it. Or they said, oh, I'm just going to mess with this real quick. I'll be careful. Don't take the chance. All it takes is just to cut the electrical power to the circuit and then you can touch the electrical wire all you want. It can't hurt you. I mean, maybe you can get poked in the finger or something if it's sharp, but Electrical wise, it can't hurt you. Um, I have in my hand a whole bunch of different things. We have this little guy that actually plugs into an outlet. He will tell us whether there's a ground, a bad neutral. Basically, it's a little gizmo that says, hey, this is a good circuit, bad circuit. But the main thing is it lights up. So if we had an outlet here, we could plug it in and see, oh, the light's on. And then you could go to your fuse box or your breaker panel and shut off breakers until the light goes out. Hey, therefore, I know there's no electricity. You could plug a lamp in. Hey, the light's on. Go down to your fuse box. You know, have somebody on the phone or whatever, or yell down. Flip the switch until you find out which one it is. Cut the power. You're good. Um, other devices here I have. Just this little thing. Um, it's two probes. You literally can stick it on two ends of the wire. You know, your, your, your two ends or an outlet, and it has a little light on the end. It'll light up if it has power. If it doesn't light up, you can assume it's safe. Uh, a meter. Um, buy a good meter. This is just a cheap one I grabbed for this video. This is, I think, like one of those freebies from Harbor Freight. Don't trust these with your life. If they're giving away for free, it's not, you know, this is great for working on the lawnmower or, or something or working on a flashlight, but not, not home electrical. Go buy a good brand. And I'm not trying to advertise it, but just go buy a, it's called a Fluke meter, F-L-U-K. It, it, it's, they're not cheap. You're going to spend a hundred bucks, 120 bucks, but if you're going to chance your life with it, you want, you know, <laughs> you want something that's decent. And then the last thing is this. This was, um, they call it, sometimes they call them a sniffer. Um, you hit the button, and if there's electrical, it'll do that. See, it says that it's on right now. So we can assume that I probably don't want to stick my fingers in there. And this is a three-way switch, but it's picking up a false reading is really what it is. Because when I'm at the end here... Notice it's not going off. It's picking up a false reading. Um, but again, this would tell me. If I really, 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 really wanted to be sure, I could come over here and we could touch it and see that it's not working. So it's safe to mess with. But again, it's one of those things that we're not gonna take a chance unless we know for sure. Um, since I'm getting a false reading, I probably wouldn't mess with that wire at the end of it until I knew for sure it was off. Luckily, I know that none of the wiring up here is hooked up, so I know it's off. No, nothing's hooked up to the fuse box at all up here. So there is no electrical current flowing up here at all. So that's okay. Um, the other thing, if, if you're not sure still, and you're like, hey, I can't figure out which breaker it is, and you're only going to be working for a little bit, just shut the main power off to the house. It's the big, giant switch at the top of your fuse box, or maybe you have the big, you know, one arm bandit, like a slot machine on the side of your panel, just shut off the entire house, then you don't have to worry. And I know you're like, well, then I gotta reset my clocks. Oh no. 
five minutes of work for what could save your life. Um, what we will talk about for a few seconds too is what happens if, you know, how, how can I work with electricity safely if I'm, you know, like I'm up by myself right now. I know it's, all, it, it's just like taking a trip somewhere by yourself or, you know, pilots have to file flight plans. Same idea. If I'm going to be doing electrical, I'm going to yell down to my wife, hey, I'm going to be doing some electrical, just an FYI. That way, if she doesn't hear me moving around, she can maybe come and check on me. Um, if I'm by myself, call mom, call dad, call, you know, call a friend and just say, hey, I'm going to be doing some electrical. Um, if I don't call you back in a half hour, um, can you check on me or something, you know, just... Have that extra, you know, backup, just in case something happened. I know it sounds like that's a lot of work. Yes. Oh, no, a phone call. Worst that happens, your mom starts talking about something and or your dad, and you're like, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's the worst case scenario. Um, but, yeah, tell somebody you're doing it. That way, at least they know. It, it, it's no different than if you go out on a boat or, like, a pilot files a flight plan. Just, just, hey, in case something happens and you don't report back, they can know where to find you or to check on you. Hey, McMullen. Um, I'm working, I see somebody, they just go stiff, and they're, it's not like the cartoons where you sit there and go, blah, 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 or anything like that. It, it is, you'll see somebody just go stiff, and they, they don't really move or say much. Um, the first instinct is you want to go and grab them. Don't. Look around. What do I have that I can, I know it sounds really weird, but you don't want to touch them, because then you're also going to get electrocuted. So what do you have? I look up here, you know, if this was truly electrocuting somebody right now, I can look over and right there. Whoops, I got a sheet of drywall. This is made out of paper. It's not a conductor. I can push the person off and then immediately call 911. Um, if they're, you know, check, are they breathing? If they're not breathing, I, I may catch flack for this, but do something. Even if you don't know CPR, do something. It is better than doing nothing. I mean, I can tell you that if I fall on the floor and somebody comes up and goes, man, I don't know CPR. Uh, I, I don't know what to do. Do something. You've watched enough, you know, videos or NCISs or whatever drama show you've been watching where they do CPR in a person, you know, like, okay, I push on their chest and count to three and stuff. Do something. It's better than nothing. Well, Mich or, um, Mr. Ikmon, isn't it true if you don't do it right, you're going to get sued? That is 100% false. Michigan has a good Samaritan law that says if you do something to help somebody that is critically injured, you are not going to, you cannot be sued or held civilly liable. Um, that's a big myth. Because uh, that was one of the things I remember in our first aid slash CPR class I had taken. You know, hey, can I get sued if I don't do this right? No. Doing something. Even the CPR instructor said doing something is better than just sitting there going, man, that person's not moving or breathing. Let's call an ambulance. And then what? Once you, you know, and then the people on the other end of 911 may walk you into, you know, walk you through what you can do while you're waiting for help to come. Um, if the person is breathing, offer them water. Um, you know, have them lay down or sit down for a minute. Just keep an eye on them because remember, electrical injuries, you cannot physically see. It's not going to be like a cut or a scrape. You, it's internally. If I was shocked enough where I was out of it, I would probably say take the person to the hospital and have them checked out. It's the safest thing to do. Even if I was just like, man, I just, I don't feel good after that. Whew. And you know, it's been five, ten minutes, I still don't feel good. Take the person to the hospital. You don't know. They may have internal injuries that you don't, you can't see. So if somebody does get shocked, make sure, you know, and you can help them use, you know, something that's not a conductor, no metal object, something that's made out of plastic, wood, something, uh, broom handles that you can push the person away from the electro, try to shut off the electricity if you can. That's another way of doing it. Um, you know, if the person's unresponsive on the ground, call for help, do something. Uh, I'm going to post the slideshow that goes along with this, and there's some things you can click on there to help you remember um, the other thing, too, is, you know, if they are responsive, remember, offer them water, check on them. If, if the person's, like, out of it, just tell them, hey, man, you know, why don't we go up and get you checked out just to be sure. It's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, and, again, all of that about ambulances and worrying can be prevented if you just make sure the power shut off. Double check, double check. I think I'm going to have, on the slideshow, it actually, that I'm going to tie in with this lesson, says, hey, First step to being safe with electricity, shut off the electricity. Step two, shut off the electricity. Step three, make sure you shut off the electricity. That's all there is to it. And you can use this all you want. Wire can't hurt you. Um, if it has power running through it, it can. If you got any questions on this lesson, um, send me an email. Remember, you can always get a hold of me pretty much, whether it's office hours or not. I, I pretty much respond through the uh, Remind app. It's texting basically between you and I. Um, 
the other thing too is there will be an assignment with this so make sure you complete the assignment that's listed below on Google Classroom and then lastly on Thursday of this week we're gonna get into actually uh, like where does the power come from so I'm gonna try to do one of those things where it's a slideshow and it's me up in the corner explaining it because electricity just doesn't appear from nowhere like we we create it whether we're harnessing the Sun or whatever we're gonna get into that so my slideshow ties in a lot more um, hopefully you now know the number one way to be safe with electricity is to shut off the electricity uh, again if you got any questions get a hold of me stay safe